Tesla's investing several more billions of dollars into their Nevada plant. And fingers crossed, this could lead to finally us getting a Cybertruck production, as well as the introduction of the most affordable $25,000 entry level Tesla. But pump the brakes because the government continues to move the goalpost with the EV tax credit and the recent price drops are great, but that doesn't mean you're gonna qualify for the full 7,500 bucks. If you're new to Kirky Cars, of course I'm Kirk and I talk about electrified vehicles and of course the industry that is always evolving. If you're into that, make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button if you're excited for new Tesla battery production and let's get into the Nevada updates for Gigafactory. And I gotta stop here because this utopia of a production plant does not actually look like this. That's what it actually looks like. So we're a long ways from it being this perfect, completely covered and perfectly symmetrical covered in, you know, solar panels and a perfect parking lot full of nothing but Teslas. But the reality is it looks more like this. Tesla invested three and a half billion dollars in Nevada with the first Gigafactory. The goal was 35 gigawatt hours and half of a million vehicles per year. And since 2014, they have invested 6.2 billion in Nevada and it built a 5.4 million square foot Gigafactory. So here are some stats of the Gigafactory so far up until 2023, 7.3 billion battery cells or 37 gigawatt hours and more annually, 1.5 million battery packs, 3.6 million drive units and 1 million energy modules. But let's see where this investment is going next. An additional $3.6 billion is being pumped in, which is funny, which is essentially the same amount that they initially invested to get Giga Nevada running. This will add 3,000 new uh, employees there and two new factories and a 100 gigawatt hour 4680 cell factory with enough batteries to produce 2 million light duty vehicles annually. Uh, this past year, Tesla sold a little over a million vehicles for the first time ever. Once they're up to production is going to definitely pass 2 million globally, probably somewhere around 4 million, just ballpark estimations there, as well as their first high volume semi factory. And the semi is their first fully electric truck with 500 miles of range and energy consumption of less than two kilowatt hours per mile. I'm not excited for the semi truck at all. I'd rather them apportion the limited battery supply for consumer vehicles. And I still think hydrogen fuel cell semi trucks is a better solution in the future. They'd be a lot lighter and you'd be able to fill up a lot quicker, assuming that a hydrogen infrastructure is built out. We're a long ways from that. And before we get into the tax credit update, Tesla, by the end of the day that I'm recording this, January 25th, they will be updating its financials. So definitely come back probably sometime tomorrow. I'm not going to do the video tonight, but definitely come back. I'll, I'll break down their deliveries, their sales, their, their forecast as well. And they have updated new software, giving you an automatic uh, heated steering wheel and sentry mode is getting lighting. So this is not just affecting Tesla. This will affect every single manufacturer who's building EVs in North America because the new tax credit doesn't count any vehicles that are built outside of North America, which immediately was a shot to many of the European automakers and all the Asian automakers until they can start building uh, EVs here in North America. So the goalposts continue to move with the EV tax credit. Senator Manchin's bill would immediately cut off credits for EVs that don't mean battery rules, but it gets worse. This is effective January 1st and it's retroactive. So no credit would be available to any new EV that does not meet the critical mineral and battery sourcing requirements. The $7,500 tax credit is divided in two stipulations. One half is based on meeting escalating requirements for battery components to come from North America. So Mexico, United States, Canada, with none from foreign entities of concern as of 20, as soon as 2024. So you might have some vehicles qualify in 2023, but not in 2024 for this. And the other half is based on critical minerals coming to the United States or free trade partners with no entity of concern sourcing from 2025. So here's the big blow. 40 new models are potentially eligible for the full 7,500 tax credit between January 1st and until the Treasury issues the required EV battery sourcing guidance, which is supposed to happen, I believe, this spring. However, under Manchin's bill, eligibility would be significantly limited during that time frame, with very few to no vehicles likely qualifying for the critical minerals portion 
of the credit. So if this bill gets passed, every single vehicle that was just announced as a full $7,500 tax credit will immediately be cut in half because the vast majority of lithium, I think it's around 70% of current lithium supply is coming from China as well as other critical minerals like rare earth metals are also coming from China. So they would immediately not qualify for at least half of the credit. And this is retroactive all the way back to January 1st if it passes. The big reason, or at least according to the politicians, that this is becoming so strict to get the EV tax credit is because they don't want to be reliant on China. They want to have our own manufacturing set up in North America, or at least with countries that have the same sort of political vision as the United States. So if you're buying an EV at this point, don't bank on the tax credit because it continues to be just an unknown and messy situation. If you can afford the vehicle without a tax credit, great. If you are expecting the tax credit to help you purchase this vehicle and you're absolutely depending on it, go buy a used car or definitely save your money until EVs maybe are a little bit more affordable. But I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. Are you excited about the 4680 batteries like ramping up in production finally? Well, we don't know exactly when they're going to be mass available from this investment, but probably in the next couple of years. But I got to end it there. I'll see you guys down below. Make sure you're subscribed for more industry auto news when it pertains to electric vehicles. I'll catch you in the next one. And peace.